What does friendship mean to you? Friendship means having someone you can count on no matter what. Great for bar tops, tabletops, game boards, clocks, plaques, ceramics. You might remember from the 360 camera on an arrow video. We sort of broke Nico's bow. I, I don't really want to go as far as to say that it, it's, it's been physically broken. More <laughs> as to say that it's been physically slightly damaged. Nico has been a little bit weird since his bow broke. It meant a lot to him. He's been kind of distant. He stopped using punctuation and emojis in all of his text messages. I feel like the light has kind of died a little bit in Nico. We need our Nico back. We, we, need, we need the cheery, spry young man that we've all come to know and love and, and we need him back in here, I think. And so it's time to fix the bow. When you make a promise to somebody, you follow through on it. If you borrow something and you damage it, you fix it. Come take a look at this. This is Nico's deceased uncle's bow, which Nico got as an heirloom from him. I don't think we actually truly assessed the damage in the last video. Right here. You see this? Come look super close. Do you see this? Yeah. So there's that, and you see that? There's a little, little notch right here. Varnish is peeling right here. That's it. That's the entirety of the oh, damage. In, in this. No, that was already there. No, that wasn't. None of this was here. All the scuffs. This was already here. This was already here. I don't know what else to say about that. A few years ago, I built a bar. Oh, like a drinking bar. Yes, a drinking bar. When you pass the bar, one thing's for sure, you're going to need a bar. When I finished that bar top, I used this pour on finish. It's a two part enamel and it creates a thick coat. You know when you go to bars and they have the pictures that are in the bar top and the bar top looks like it's made out of glass? That's this stuff basically creates this glass-like enamel, creates a really nice super glaze clear finish on it, which is very similar to what Nico already has on here. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour a tiny bit of this into a mixing cup. I'm going to lightly sand away some of this stripping plastic fiber, and then I'm just gonna apply with a brush a tiny bit of glaze on here to create a smooth finish once again over the top. When you finish this stuff to keep bubbles out of it, you wanna take a blowtorch and very lightly just like flick the flame. This should be able to handle that task just fine. So very lightly, I'm gonna do this. I'm kinda nervous, this isn't my bow. This, it's working here in this divot. I'm trying to keep this sliver, but it needs, it needs something to press it down onto the bow to apply pressure. Maybe a tiny dab of super glue just to keep it down, and then the epoxy can set in around it. There's a lot of different ways you could solve a problem like this, and I'm by no means a professional fletcher. I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of good opinions on how to do this and what type of epoxy to use and resin to use, and I'm just saying, I've used this before before it worked, this is a very simple problem, and so it requires a simple solution. I'm just gonna make sure that this resin is nice and smooth now, and that's pretty much all we're gonna need to do, gents. I don't think I need. I should mess with it anymore, but you don't wanna overdo this, because it can get out of hand real quick. So, right, really quickly, if you already know the answer to what I'm about to say, just don't say it. Rot over this weekend went up around 250,000 hits. More. More. Why do you think that might have happened? I'm gonna take a wild guess. It's related to a fan game that came out, and that fan game... Way to ruin it, Nico. Oh. Way to ruin it. Wild guess. Wild. <laughs> I told, I, wild I, guess. I told Nico earlier, he knew. <laughs> that wasn't a wild guess at all. Here's what happened. I got, I got a message on Instagram. Hey, you should check this out. All right, what's going on? Like, I really don't watch Let's Play videos. I like, go, oh, it's Markiplier. So I press play, and I start going, this seems really familiar, and it turns out out someone created a video game directly inspired from the short. So I want, you, I want you to check it out. It's crazy. What? Yeah. Now this one is gonna start out with one called Rot. I don't know why I'm clapping. This one's called Rot. And it looks fantastic. It looks so good. I actually had to go into my game settings or my card set my computer. I had to use my wizarding magic to zap my computer into something that could actually record and handle this game at the same time. And I don't know what this game is about, but we're gonna find out right now. I actually don't even know if this is a straight up horror game. What? Oh. Like, right. Right. Well, I already have a problem here because I'm starting this out in the middle seat, and I don't know who volunteered for the middle seat. Marcus Lawrence speaks like an American Sean Connery. <laughs> yeah, <it does. laughs> Man, my head is a few, a few inches too far forward from my face and just able to turn right a little too much. But let's move it. It's a Samsung. It's a yeah, horror game. Really nailed that part. Yeah, they got the. Oh no! Oh, 
level. Oh! Hi! Um, oh, oh! Uh, I'll be right there! Hey! <laughs> Hi! So crazy. It's, it was so surreal. Hello! Like, when I was watching it, I'm like, wait, what's going on? Like, why are they... Like, I didn't get it. Who's okay? Glad you started the light show back up. your other games. That was so cool! What the fuck? That was, I didn't even know that! What? That was awesome! That was rad! Isn't videos. that crazy? Someone's making, yeah, that's... And then you go to the top comments. It's so crazy. Isn't that crazy? And then, I'm sure all of you guys know this, but this week is gonna be my last week here. Hopefully, uh, I can come back around December, January. But, you know, I just wanna say you guys have been freaking amazing. Dude. And it's been like an honor to work with everybody here. And, yeah, uh, you know, I'm hoping when I'm done with the project, I can come on back and keep making awesome videos with you guys. It's been a yeah, pleasure. Dude, it was great working with you. Man. Pleasure, man. Awesome. Awesome. Fist bumps all around. Cool. Fist bumps. Fist bumps. Johnny, too. We've allowed 72 hours for the super glaze to dry. Now let's see what the finished result is. Yeah, it worked pretty well. You know, I could even add a little bit more, but totally fine. I could sand a little bit of it off. Well, I think it could use more, honestly. You tell me if it's fixed. Jake, this looks pretty fixed to me. You did a great job, man. Thank you, son. Can't even tell. Now does this qualify me as a Fletcher now? Does it? Yeah, in hindsight, we definitely should have just taken a tiny little wooden dowel. I could have printed a little mount for it. But I was like, ah, oh, no. Nice silhouette. Oh, you see this, dude? You wanna see this? I want, I want you to tell me if you think it's done. Cause I can do more to it if you want. Not bad. How'd it go? I was able to save that, the, the fibers. This is looking good here. I yeah. I think you might have a bit of an issue here with how sharp it is on this yeah. side. So I don't know if you can smooth it out. Oh, here. Yeah, I was thinking about adding more into that <laughs> divot, divot. Cause mm -hmm. ideally, if you're a blind person, your hand should go across it, you shouldn't feel that. Yeah, if that was smooth, then, because when the arrows are going across here, it's gonna right. scrape the feathers. This part here could use some lacquer also. Yeah. yeah. And this wasn't, this isn't from you guys. This is uh, it's yeah. just glue, you can actually take this there's off. There's a pad there, right? Yeah, there's a little yes. velvet pad. I'll sand it and then seal it. Sand it and seal it, and see if you can get rid of this ridge. If we can't get rid of this ridge, we might have to just... We can get rid of that ridge. Okay. Yeah, it's just a matter of applying more into here, so you don't feel this dent. It's looking good, man. Cool. It's looking real good. Cool. I'm gonna sand this down slightly and then uh, just apply more of the glaze to two different areas, the divot and then as well as right here. And that's pretty much it. Just gonna make some minor adjustments and we'll be done. Now we let this cure till Monday. I show it to Nico then and given where he was at with the additional improvements I've made here, I think he's gonna love it. I got a question for you, Sam. Do you ever worry with people coming in and out of the team that it reflects weird when we make a show out of all the characters in the studio? Everybody that works here is also on camera talent. Does that reflect poorly? What, what, what's the question yeah, exactly? Yeah, I'm like, do you, ever, do you ever worry that like, you know, in a TV show when a character leaves, it's a big deal usually. But here, you know, people's jobs ends and they move on to other things, and, but their character leaves. Do you ever worry that people get attached to a character and then the character is gone. Like to put our to put our employment life so publicly. Like you ever worry about it reflecting poorly on us? I don't think it reflects poorly, no. I, if anything, I'd say uh, we don't make it into a bigger, like I don't think we make it into big enough of a deal. <laughs> that people leave? That people leave. We're here, we're used to it, we're in the business of it, and we understand that things are more complex in reality when people come and go, but when you watch it as a show or as a vlog or something like that, you're not always getting the full story. It does feel like a big deal. It's like watching a show and you're like, a character dies and like, 
Did anyone not see that? Like they left, they, they're gone forever. Oh my God. And, and like all the characters just continue on with their lives. I'm like, but, but, but that character was important. That's, I feel like what the effect is like. Cause everyone's like, oh, Adrian. Oh, oh no, that sucks. He's leaving. No, that was a big deal. Yeah, I don't know. That's all I have to say. I think we could, I, I mean, what do you think? Do you think it's, no, why, why am I asking you? You have, no, you have no context. We have all the context. <sighs> Over the weekend, I learned a new trick that I'm super proud of. It took me over a year to learn it, and it clicked on Saturday, and then I spent all day Sunday practicing it, and I know how to go up a curb now. The problem is that in the process of me learning, I abused this front float plate so much that I started stripping the screws out of the holes. I installed what are called float plates from the Float Life. It's plastic shields that you strap to the bottom of the one wheel. But here's the thing, I wanna keep doing these tricks, but I don't wanna do the tricks without the float plate. So I wanted to try to repair this. Just to point out, I was not given this one wheel. I bought this with my own money. I know that this is worth every penny. Even though I spent a lot of money on this, I will use it, but I have a salary here at Corridor that is partially funded by you viewers, specifically you patrons. I wanna give a thank you to the top tier patrons. All of you watching that, put a little bit of sprinkling money. Philip Oxford. Oh, hey, we're about to have a hangout here in like three hours to talk one to one because that's also a Patreon tier. So, Philip, talk to you in three hours. Seth the Mad Scientist. Gandalf? Oh, Gary Dalf. Gary Dalf? I thought your name was Gandalf, dude. We have Nathan McFarlane. Aiden Wright. We have Nicholas Saltis. And we have G Squared. Yo, what up, G Squared? So is that GG? Is that like GG to the G? To take the actual foot pad off. Thanks to Taylor Dunbar. Oh man, we got these tiny screws. Thank you, Colin Heaton. Heaton. You always pronounce the T's with a hard T. Button? Manhattan? Yeah. Yeah, because they're fing T's. We have Mitch Plowinski. Thanks to Glitch Cube as well. Ooh. Oh! And of course, we also have James Bailey. James James Bailey's been around for a while, y'all. And lastly, thank you to Brian and Tozik. Those are our top tier patrons. If you want to learn more about our Patreon and want to support us, I am going to gaff tape this with the gaff tape going underneath the front foot pad. This is not a long-term solution. This is just a band-aid. I, I, I want some suggestions on the best way to attach this screw to a bit of like a stripped out situation here, right? Woo! Finally upon us. Let me get this going here. How's it look? It looks it's smooth, dude. That's the yeah. main thing. Yeah, I feel that. Nice. Yeah, now the question is should I sand down so it's not quite as glossy? Should you get it with that fine fine? Yeah, that fine fine. Dude, that, that's uber fine. I sanded it down a bit more and I gotta say I can't even tell that it was broken. It looks and feels beautiful. The the, the edge is nice and smooth. It's not it's not sharp anymore. An arrow should fly right off of this thing as if it was the day that it was made. Hey, I believe this is your bow. I believe it is. You just let me know if uh, if it's if it's your bow. Oh that feels good. Look at that, smooth, no ridges there. This is all sealed up. Feels good, no ridges there either. I'm impressed, Jake. Thanks, man. The first coat of finish that I applied created a, a substance that I could then sand to make it nice and smooth. Yeah, it looks good. You think it'll shoot true? I think I need to go find out. I think it went pretty well. He seemed pretty happy with the bow. Hopefully it shoots straight and true because uh, it used to before and I think I think it will again. There's probably other types of lacquers and things like that, or other techniques that, um, uh, uh, hey, come back out and try hitting some targets. I hear arrows flying, dude. Yeah, working. Did you get a bullseye yet? I have, actually. Nice. When you can hit your bullseyes, the arrows seem to be sliding off the arrow rest just fine. I'm gonna aim for the top left. A little high. But I'm not seeing any wobble or feeling any scratching or anything. Yeah, I'm glad we fixed that, that ridge. Thanks for fixing it. You're welcome. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for letting us use it in all the videos. It's an honor. Well, you know, if you're going to remember somebody's legacy with an item, you got to keep using that item. Just having it sit on the shelf is the same as throwing it away. So, you want to take a couple shots? Yeah, love to. Should we buy a bow for the channel to use? No. 
Not with friends like this, guys. <laughs> <laughs> My second favorite thing to do in life is savor champagne bottles. And since this is Adrian's last day, I figured he should savor a champagne bottle. And it, trust me, it's so easy. So you All right, to, well, I've, never, ne I've never done this before. You've never done it. Do you know what it is? I've seen it. I've seen people do it, yeah. Let's start by picking out the blade you want to use. Oh, it's a fine blade. Like this blade, I can barely pick it up. Savoring champagne is awesome because you're in high spirits. Why else would you take a sword and a glass bottle and create a small pressurized explosion. Sabering champagne is super, super easy because it's all about hitting a single precise point on the bottle, which is very easy to find. We're gonna look for the seam. When the bottle is created, there's these two ends that meet and then are kind of connected here together. One of the weakest points on the bottle is right here, right where that seam touches that first lip. Just imagine my hand's the sword, take it, and you just push, shink, right, and right when it hits that lip, whole thing will go. Adrian? Yes. Do your worst. All right, this is the first time I've ever savored a bottle of champagne. Maybe the last. And That's yeah, quite it. possibly the last. Wait, let's wait for this plane. We got a plane. Precise. All right, it's on you. All right, all you. Woo! Perfect, first try. <laughs> Woo! That was masterful. Thank That's you, it. Sam, for teaching me. <laughs> there you go. Adrian, I'm sad that you are going to miss when we get to 100. I told you, hit me up when you're filming Janky. I'll come up for free to help out. Dude, heck yeah, man. Yeah. Heck yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna paste one of your uh, film pictures of yes. you on my monitor to yeah. always remember. I'm like a fallen soldier, oh. fallen comrade. Take hey, your guys. Boys. hey Adrian. guys, to you guys. Thanks, Adrian. Yep. Yeah, not bad. That's good champagne. Ah, that's good stuff. Danny's still out in the desert, right? Oh.